Okay, we are back. Uh, hello, Astrid, again. Uh, okay. Um, we can start with your presentation. Um, I just want to present you again. Um, Astrid is an active member of the Austrian Charter member uh, since 2010, and she will uh, talk about create great applications for your need with Map Bender. So you go. <laughs> okay. So hello, everybody. It's great to be here at Fosfuji 2021, Buenos Aires. And it's a pleasure for me to talk about Map Bender and show you how you can create great applications. You can see um, a picture already with Map Bender applications where you can see that you can use it, this um, software, on different devices. And I will give you an introduction and do also a live demo to show you how you can administrate Ms. Madbender. So my name is Astrid Emde and I'm broadcasting here from Cologne. I work at Wear Group in Bonn since 2002 and I work with OSGU software every day at my day job. And um, I work with PostgreSQL, Postgres, Map Server, and all this great software. And I'm in the Map Bender Project Steering Committee. And um, I have my focus on WebGIS and web mapping and do consultancy and trainings. Wear Group um, is a company based in Germany, and we have more than 40 employees. We are developer, consultants, and geospatial experts. We are located in Bonn, Berlin, Freiburg, and Hamburg. And we um, have successful uh, open source solutions running since more than 15 years. And um, we are the company behind MapBender and also Metador and Mops. And we are active in FOSGS and OSGU. And if you are interested to work at Wear Group, you are welcome because we are hiring. But now have a, we ha will have a look at MapBender and uh, we will show you how I will show you how easy it is to configure. So it's a WebGIS client suite with an administration interface, and you can create a geo portal without writing a single line of code. So it might be interesting for you if you are not a developer. You can create any number of applications with only one installation. You can create and maintain an an OWFS repository with your services, and you can distribute configured services among applications. You also have users and groups that you can administrate, and you can grant users and groups access to applications and services. You have support for several languages, and if your language is not presented um, present uh, already, you could add it um, by editing some of some language files and add your language to MapBender. We have a website where you find all the information. It's linked uh, on the slide, which I will publish after the talk. And here on this next slide, you can see the MapBender project. Um, most of the people or all the people are from Wear Group. Um, so this is uh, the team that works on the software. It's an old software project and it incubated already 2006 as first OSGU project. We have a MIT license, we have code on GitHub and our architecture is, it's a PHP framework with Symfony that we use. We have HTML, Bootstrap, open layers as map client and YAML configuration. And what you require if you want to run MapBender, you, you need a server where it is installed on. You need a web server like Apache HTTP server or Nginx. You need PHP for MapBender and you need a database for administration. This could be SQLite or PostgreSQL for example. Then um, MapBender offers a big toolkit with functionality. So MapBender offers many features that you can combine. 
you have elements for visualization, you can create and edit data, you have search and print functionality and much more. And we have a feature list on our website where you can find the feature and have a look. I will show you um, if you have a look on our website. We have um, functions where you can discover the functionality of MapBender, which we divide um, in different sections. And um, you can find out what MapBender offers. And you can get inspired by our gallery as well. We have a gallery where we show showcases. And there you can see that map vendors are also in Argentina. So greetings to the Gubiano de Tucumán, which run this uh, map vendor application. And if we go back to the gallery, you will see that there are much more applications that you can discover. So let's have a look at one of some of these applications to give you a first idea about MapBender. So we have a COVID dashboard from um, an area in Germany where you can see the active COVID cases and um, you can get information about the um, special regions, um, how the situation is there. You have a side pane, we call it, where you can uh, place HTML information or a legend. We have um, the functionality that you can integrate HTML as well to provide diagrams like it is done here. And um, yeah, you can navigate and you can keep it simple like it is done maybe in this application. And a new feature that was implement implemented is this application switcher. You could provide one or more other applications that you could switch. So from this view, I could switch to a different application. And um, from the COVID map, I could switch to this map where you find um, pharmacies or places where you find um, the possibility to get tested. So, um, yeah, you can see that an application can look differently and um, you also can um, add a search interface into your application. This works with Solar or Nominatum or Photon or also with a new OGC RP feature um, services. You could add legend legends to your applications where the results come from the services that you integrate in the application. You have a background switcher where you could switch um, the information that you can see with this background switcher and we will see a different solution how you can do it in a minute. And this background switcher makes it really easier, easy to switch from one topic to a different one. Okay, so in the gallery, we saw this example and we have many more. And um, another one that I would like to show you is Rio. It's not the Rio in South America, but it's Rio here in close to Cologne. It's um, a portal from the, the Oberbergische Kreis. And so here you find a lot of applications. So I mentioned that you can provide a lot of applications for different needs. And uh, in this applications, you find different collections of services. And here you can see instead of this layer switcher, background layer switcher, you have a big tree with a lot of information. Every folder represents a service and here you could um, add more information to your map and then uh, find out more about the region. And you can see more functionality here and get information or you could measure lines or areas. You could um, switch the application as well as, as we saw already. And in this application, you find the search functionality not at the top, but here at the side where you have um, functionality 
to search special address or also you could create element with an element which offers you sql search you could find um, parcels or um, addresses or historic parcels and this search element allows you to configure your um, your um, search that you are interested in which runs um, on a postgresql um, table and you can figure it um, can configure it as you like so this should give you a, a short idea how a mapbender application could look like and now let's see um, yeah, we will have a closer look and create our own application. So Mapbender, if you get when you get started, um, Mapbender offers you template applications, and you can um, copy them and modify them for your needs. If you would like to have a look how these template applications look like, you can have a look at our demo. And I prepared an installation, a Mapbender installation, where we can try everything so first um, if you want to administrate mapbender you have to log in you can see it here at the top and if you are not logged in you might have no you have no access to the administration backend and you have access to some applications but maybe not um, to um, special applications then when you log in You have access to more functionality and here you can see you have applications, you have sources, you have security and all these regions you can administrate. And as you can see here, you find applications that are already shipped with MapBender. These are the demo template applications. And then you can create your own applications. And um, your own applications, you can see you have more functionality. You can edit the applications. You could view the application, copy them, download them, and um, administrate the access to the application. So if you get started, you can start from scratch and copy an application. This is really easy. Then you change the name. And then you can get started with your new application. The application looks the same as the one that you have copied. And then you can decide which elements you would like to keep or whether you would like to change the ordering and um, which services you would like to add to your application. And this is done with the back end. So here you can see um, the layout where you can decide which of the elements you would like to provide. So for example, I could change the ordering. I put the legend to the right and now when I update the application, you see that the legend button is here at the right and it is easy to manage. So via drag and drop, you can modify the position of the elements. You could delete elements if you don't need them. You could add more elements if you need more functionality. You could add links or HTML contact and um, a new feature is that you could decide in which um, on which um, device you would like to show um, a link or an element. So um, maybe for mobile devices, it does not make sense to show all these um, functionality or for example, not the print functionality. And then you can decide whether you would like to provide it the one or the other way. Okay. So this is for the elements and every element you can change the position via drag, drag and drop. And um, I show you, for example, for the map, you can decide which uh, projection you would like to support, which start extent you would like to choose, which extent you want to cover with this application and which other projections you would like to support. 
and every element has a different configuration and um, yeah it's kept simple but um, still you have to learn about every element and what it offers so here you can see that this application covers the um, area of Bonn. You see the extent that was defined in the map element. You see the projections and you could switch to a different projection. You can navigate. You have these scales that we saw in the administration, but you can navigate um, depend independently and choose um, every scale you would like. Whenever you change the map, um, navigate in the map, a map request is sent to the WMS service and with OpenLayer 6, which is integrated now, we have new map um, features in the navigation. You can rotate the map, which is quite nice. Okay, so we saw that you can administrate the tools that you put into your application and also the services. So you could add more services and uh, this is done this part so here you can see all the services that are always already in the OWF, OWS repository of, of my bender and you could add a source easily so you find here um, this form where you have to insert the address of the service Let's see, I prepared an address and then you can upload the service and regi register it um, in MapBender. And then afterwards you can use it in all your applications. And you load it once and after that MapBender knows all the information about the service and knows how, how it is um, set up. And then you can ship it to the applications and afterwards you can see in which application this service is already integrated. So for my new application, Force4G, so there, there haven't been much services inside yet. So I can go here and add more services. So. Maybe I take this one and you could decide how you would like to present this service, which form format you would like to use, whether you like a opacity or um, you could decide that you would like to disable some of the um, service, some of the layers that you don't want to provide and you yeah, could do all, all sorts of things. And um, here you can see that I added more information to my to my project. And one new feature that we have is that we can provide applications in different ways. You can um, create shared instances which are bound to this application or you can create um, shared instances or we have private instances, sorry, and shared instances. So if you create a shared instance and you will um, administrate many of many applications, it's really useful because you do one configuration and this is used in all the applications where you um, provide this um, service to. And just to show you, we have this security region where you can decide which user should get access to the application. We can create users and groups and you, with these users and groups, you can grant access to applications and that's, that's it. We worked on a new backend design and a new frontend design is going to come soon. We are working on this at the moment. We have new functionality. We can create this shared instances that I mentioned. We saw the application switcher. We have feature info highlights. So on feature info, the areas that you choose, they are highlighted. We have this improved navigation and we have share and view manager. So um, when you have an application, you can easily 
provide um, views that you would like to save. This is here and you can make them public or just for you. And uh, like this, you can easily jump from one region to, to another. Then we have um, yeah, this simple search um, element, which support a lot of, of services. And we have a digitize tool where you can digitize point lines, polygons, and you can create complex forms to um, um, edit attributes. We have a print map and a print where you can design your own print template and you can rotate the map. And the new feature is that we have a print queue. So the print output will be stored on the server and you have a history so you can reprint it and you can also save it uh, in a JSON configuration and rerun it on the command line. Then you have a feature print where you can um, print from the feature info or from the di digitizer. You can make a print layout for a feature that you are interested in and get all the attributes as well to the print output. Then we have a dimensions handler, which um, yeah, is, is running together with a WMS time. So you could um, choose this dimension handler to um, see different states of your data um, through this functionality. And you can design your application. You could add a CSS to your application. You can do it with this CSS editor, as you see in the administration backend, or you could save a file as well and design your own corporate design for your applications. And also you could write your own functionality. So MapBender is modular, it is extensible, and that makes it really um, useful and easy to provide your own functionality. If you want to try MapBender, you can um, use it, go to OSGU Live and work with MapBender on OSGU Live. It's installed there. And um, I hope I could give you a short introduction to MapBender and hope, yeah, you're interested in the project. And um, maybe we will see you at the next MapBender user meeting. Okay, that's it. And Enjoy Phosphor-G. Thank you, Astrid. That was a great presentation, very clear. I really enjoyed it. And I really want to try MapBender now, so that's great. That's good. We'll uh, see some questions. You have uh, many questions. Um, we can start uh, with, uh, where do you control the symbology of layers? And do you support OGC WFS also? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So maybe um, I was not clear. So at the moment, we only support WMS. So, um, and MapBender is not creating the service. It only brings them all together in an application. So to create the services, you need Map Server or Geo Server or QG Server or a different software. And MapBender is a client that visualizes the um, services. So everything that you see in the map is um, provided from the WMS and from the services that are integrated in this um, MapBender application. So the symbology is not done by MapBender, but by, by the services. Ah, and the second question was whether we provide um, WFS. So this is not um, in the... Um, published stack already, but we had internal projects running with WFS. And maybe in the future, this will be a project that we will work on. But I would um, expect that we will focus more on the new OGC RP family to support this. I mentioned that this is already working with a, a one field search that I displayed, uh, di that I showed you. And um, yeah, I think it would be very powerful to have also um, feature support in the client so that you really can work with the feature. And um, yeah, we, we work with the feature already um, when we, when I might, might show you when we 
work with the digitize um, application um, but in this case we we talk to the database um, itself and not with with a service but um, yeah maybe that's something that's coming in the future okay great thank you um, there is uh, another question. According to the map vendor docs, it seems as map vendor requires PostgreSQL version my, uh, level 10. Is there a roadmap when map vendor will run on later Postgres version? I will uh, okay. Yeah. And I think the documentation there is a bit outdated. Uh, MapBender supports newer versions of PostgreSQL as well. Um, so it should be fine to, to run it with um, PostgreSQL 12 or 13. Um, so if you take the latest MapBender version, you should be fine. Okay. Great. Because we, we are now um, moving to a newer Symfony version, which integrates Doctrine, which works with a newer PostgreSQL version and so it should work now. Great. Uh, another question is, uh, does the geodata need to be in a particular format or can you define what data to visualize in the admin section? Mm, no, yeah, the data has to be in a, in a special format. So at the moment, if you want to work with data, you need uh, services and we support WMS and WMTS as services that you can load. And um, also this WMS with time support, but that's all at the moment. And maybe, um, yeah, on other parts, like in the digitize functionality that I showed you um, in, uh, in, a minute ago, there we, we talked to a PostgreSQL database directly to the tables and also in the search functionality where you could um, configure your parcel search or address search. This is um, also talking to the PostgreSQL table directly. So MapBender is quite um, working to good working together with PostgreSQL. Okay, great. Um, there is another question. Uh, are there are there way to create chloroplet maps joining a geosource like MVT with a tabular data provided by an API? Mm, no, not at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, there is um, there is a way to connect to Post GIS, uh, but are we also able to connect to Views queries? Um, I maybe I did not uh, get the last yes, one. To what are we possible to connect? Views to? or queries? Ah, yeah, yes, sure. Uh, yeah, I didn't understand it at first. So yes, that's no problem. So you could create views for the search or for your dig digitizer as well, and then community communicate with the views. So for address search or parcel search, this is often done because you want to get the street key connected to the street name or design it um, uh, in a special way. So this is quite common that you work with use, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, there is also a question regarding if it is possible to edit data with a map vendor. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, yeah, maybe it was at the beginning of the talk when the question was asked because I demonstrated yeah. it here in the digitizer. So you can add data, you can um, design the form, how you would like to save the data, which attributes you would like to um, fill. And here um, you can add date picker or text fields, you can define mandatory fields or select boxes. And um, in the back end, you can um, add triggers, for example, or you can add um, information in this form and it's easy, it's really nice. And um, also you will have different functionality. For example, you could create objects and move them or you can only move um, special uh, points of your object and save it again. And if you uh, modify different 
geometries you can save all the modification afterwards and yeah here you can see for polygons you have um yeah polygons rectangles donuts circles ellipses uh, that you can create and the power that i see is that you have all this edit digitize functionality but you can also create forms as you like with tabs and all these things it's really flexible but in the back ends i didn't show you how it worked it's a bit of yaml code that you have to write but after some practice you will be familiar how to to do it okay great thank you okay i think uh we are on time so uh we will thank you again astrid it, it is it was a very nice presentation and my blender looks great so um thank you all for attending this session i hope you continue to enjoy uh phos4g and uh, we will see each other probably in other sessions so thank you for that uh sorry astrid you can say bye bye see you